Yeah. All right, it's five o'clock. Let's bring this meeting to order. Um, everybody has the agenda? Choice of here. Make a motion we accept the minutes for last meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Okay. Secondly, has everyone had a chance to read the <coughs> minutes from the uh, February 26, 2019 meeting? We just approved. We just did, did you just approve those, sir? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Do I have a do I have a motion? I already said it. Already we already voted on it. All right, done. Good. Done. 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 All right. Quick today. Okay. Let's bring in the. Uh, let's. Uh, we're going to move the library right to the front of the agenda. You guys want to come up? You guys want to come up and. Can I do John, what's you want to slide down, John? John, what's your slide down? I'm just like going to the back row. There you go. That's in the Cultural Recreation Services packet. You see it? Got it. Okay, library's on four. Okay, so, um, Hi. how you doing? Okay. Paul, you know you? No, I don't. Let's, uh, let's introduce ourselves. Um, Okay. I'm Bob Fighting Cabbage. Hi. How are you? Yeah. Jim Kirkham. Hi. Hi. Dan Kennedy. Brian. Fred Rolowski. Hi. Fred Barron. Hi. Hi. Tom Maher. Hello. That's Amy. I don't know Hi. anybody. I don't know. Yeah. I'll bet you know. And who you are? I am Cindy Steiner, the new library director. Terrific. Well, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Good to have you on board. Hey, I've actually been in here in Whaley since 2015. I just moved up the ladder, that's all. We love to promote from within. That's been one of the hallmarks of this town. Brian started out as a third grader. In, oh, no, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm wrong person. Um, well, that's great. So this is our annual okay. process to develop a budget. Okay. It's responsibility of the Finance Committee to put that budget together, to make a recommendation to town. Um, and that's done on the town floor during the, during the meeting in April. Um, and how we do this is we, um, obviously everybody submits the budgets that they have, um, and then come in to explain why you need that money and what changes might be there, um, and sort of bring us into full scope. So, um, what are we waiting for? We've got and Joyce is, well, obviously you probably know Joyce. Uh, this is a combination, Finance Committee and Select Board. Okay. And the reason we do that is because, well, it saves, it saves all, all the departments time from having to explain to two different meetings, um, you know, the budget that they have. And it allows us to converse about the budgets themselves and hopefully at the end of the process it's faster it's better for everybody else so anyway i'll stop talking and okay tell us a little bit about your budget can i just add one thing before sure so i, I had emailed jim i think i emailed you this yesterday what the finance committee has before in terms of salary is level funded from the pre previous year yeah. and then there's a town-wide cola that's voted on and those would be adjusted um accordingly okay so that's why it's a little bit different than yeah, the one that you had submitted different. but the general expenses line items are the okay. should be should be what you submitted okay. so um we're keeping line items for all of the salaries we are keeping our office supplies, are actually um, requesting about $100 less than last year because we don't really need a lot in the way of office supplies. Right now we're pretty good. Postage is at $60 and that's mostly the postage is to mail out overdue notices or I've mailed a few books back to Ingram, our book supplier, because they came to us damaged. So that was used that way. Um, because we have the mini splits, we're not spending as much on oil this year. 
So that's why the electricity bill went up because the mini splits are electric and they, you know, especially when the weather's sure. colder, they're going to run a little bit more. We really got hit the last two years with cold yeah. weather. Yeah. And they're they're efficient down to about 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. Below that, those things work very hard. Yeah. So that's why we've asked for a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And the $15,000 for collection development, that is flexible um, depending upon what our final total budget, budget is. But in order to get money from Massachusetts Library Commission, we need to spend 20% of our budget on collection development, which is not just books, it's magazines, newspapers, DVDs, audio books. Um, <coughs> The water, we left it at $100 because I'm not sure yet what's going on with that. Maintenance, we increased it by $500 just because, well, it's. Jim, do you want to explain maintenance? Because it's an older building. Yeah, it's just a, the, the age of the building that we felt we needed a little extra to, to keep up with the, the repairs. There's, you always, see there's always repairs. Oh, there's so always. Right. Is that where you're custodian? <coughs> no, the custodian has a cell oh, still still way yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 you know, like for, for example, we replaced all the lights in the uh, in the rotunda to LEDs because they were burning out. They were all fluorescents up there, yep. and they were really a high energy using thing. So that's why we pumped this category up just a little bit. So we pump it up, but we're also going to save on the electricity. And then. Any cash remains the same. That's just money that's in the library in a secure location in case an emergency comes up and I need to buy something like ink for the printer instead of waiting for a W. B. Mason order to come to or something. We're eliminating pest control, so that's reducing our budget. IT support, we've increased it by $300. Uh, we've eliminated Wowberry, which was a week, basically all Wowberry was, was a weekly email sent to our patrons who had signed up for it saying, these are the new books we have, come in and see them. But there weren't a lot of patrons signed up for it, so it didn't really seem worth $375 for the year. <coughs> I'd much rather have all of you come into the library and see me, and then you can see what books we have. Um, Still a thousand dollars for professional development, which will help cover trainings or workshops that I need to take to get be able to maintain my library directorship. Um, our CWR's network fee that is potentially will be adjusted because we are switching to Comcast, which is the additional one thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars. So Comcast will be providing us with our internet service, but we will still have to pay CWMRs, which is the library system that we belong to. That's the system that provides us the ability to order books from other <coughs> libraries and set, have them sent here for our patrons. And it just, you know. Okay. So we, right. So we do have to keep have CWMRs, <coughs> and that's pretty much. Our budget. Did I need anything else? No, you have to do a good job. Yay! Very good. You, Thank you. you have not had Comcast up till now? Or no, we have question? not. Well, who gives you your Prior to being part of Comcast, we were part of the um, CW Mars Massachusetts Broadband Institute, so they provided us with fiber optic cable wiring and a box to provide us with our internet access. Yeah. And is that Free no, them? that was part of our CW Mars network free. fee. It was about a thousand dollars a year. It was a while. Okay, but so, so for example, for 2019, it would have been a thousand out of that three thousand dollars. Right. So, if you did not go to Comcast, it would be the CW Mars fee would be four thousand dollars. Give or take, yes. So, but Comcast is charging you fourteen hundred. Right. So why go to a more expensive, and it's not it's actually, gonna be fiber? It's actually, well, Brian, can you kind they of were at, on They that? Through MBI, at least for for this building, um, we were at five megabytes per second. We were at For three. around $130 a month. So in this building, we were able to switch to Comcast 
uh -huh. um, for, that is an 84, 85, somewhere between 80, 94, 80 megabits per second. 80? Okay. 90? And they're paying about $110 a month for, mm -hmm. why do they have to pay more than the 10 offices? No, I think both of ours are around $114 oh, a month. Yep, yeah, both of them are. We have a bill for one. Yeah, I was going to say, because, 114, uh, yeah. because 1400 divided by 12 is not $75 a month. Yeah. yeah. What we're hoping for, George, is the CWRs will adjust their annual fee because you're not using their internet service. Right. Correct. So our fee will go down. Hopefully it's going to go down. We okay, so earlier when you said it would be 4200 that was not correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're negotiating with CWMRs. We're going to meet with them, their IT people, and see what kind of adjustment we can get from them to cover uh, the, C the uh, Comcast fee. Yeah. Will that happen soon, that negotiation? Or yes. Will we know before the budget is finalized? Probably what that will. Be? It probably will. Yes. I can pass that on to you, Brian. They, they may not let us. It, firewalls are important with those folks, so and this is all new territory for right. so we have to just see what where it leads us. When's the biggest driver of the electricity? Is this going to be enough? Yeah, the, the, the mini splits <coughs> in the wintertime, below 20 degrees, that's what eats it all up. The, the air conditioning is dirt cheap. It's hardly anything. It's, it's just a little blip. It's the heat that... Um, see, so you don't have... So the old oil system or gas system you had is no longer there? Or? It's, it's there, Paul. It's a backup system. Yep. It's up and running. Um, I've got the thermostat set, so if it, hits, if it gets down into really single-digit numbers, the steam system will kick in. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it works. It's fine. It's inspected. It just got inspected a short time ago. Yes. And, um, so it's there. I have no intentions of discontinuing it. How long have the mini splits been there? Did you just say that? Excuse me? How long have the mini splits been there? This two years. Yeah. So, it's about two years. So the numbers here under 2017, appropriated and expended, appropriated and expended, that was during times when you had the mini splits. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're asking for something like, not quite double, but like, uh, uh, it's around $800, $900 actually expended in those years yeah, but you're keeping it at 1500 to be on the safe side because you never know when you're going to get hit with correct with a really cold the, the year and that's what you need this for is for a really cold time. yeah the first year years we have very good experience it was a mild winter and we said wow this is this is great the next winter it, it just didn't get about 20 degrees for a month or so so this is too so, and then and this winter is the same thing yeah, yeah. um but I don't know what the comparison is. I mean, this is just a general conversation now between allowing the oil to heat a building, whether it's this building or that building, versus the electric consumption with mini splits. Mm -hmm. If they're working that hard, um, I don't know. Does anybody have any input on that? Does it make more sense to use it in the winter, the oil in the winter, and just use the mini splits more for the sun to keep well, it cooler? The, the but I mean, that's six of one and half a dozen the other. I really don't know. The thing with the oil is it's, it's a steam system. Yeah. And it's either, it's either on or it's off. Right. You, can't, yeah. uh, you can't direct the heat from the no. lower level, the upper level. Oh, that's, oh, yeah. I see. And you I drive see. yourself crazy. I, I have a, a heat pump at home, too. If you just, yeah. if you go by the temperature outside, then like every night you can turn right. it on, every night you can turn it off. Yeah. People I know who own mini splits say exactly what you said. For the air conditioning, it's tremendous, okay. and it's sort of, uh, you know, it's it's from the from a heating perspective, it's sort it's of the here. fringe, the yeah. fringe of the summer, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's spring or fall, but past that, mm -hmm. not very effective. <coughs> and they they yeah. do work it's in single digits, but they just work really. They work hard. They work hard, right? They will suck yeah. electricity <coughs> day and night. So, yeah. um, I don't know about that, but. So as it sits right now, you get a 5.22% increase um, over, over last year, and that's without the COLA, Brian? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So COLA will be coming in. You know, how we, and Jim is aware of this, you know, we look at all the budgets at some point in the very near future, we take a look, see how it all comes together, 
and whether or not we have to make recommendations to um, make adjustments to individual budgets. Okay. So we won't know that right now. But are there any other questions or issues that you'd like to address regarding the library? About the capital. What? Capital. Capital. The yep. capital project. Do you want to speak to that a little bit, Jim? Yes, we, uh, we requested from uh, capital and the monies for uh, an architect for our accessibility issues. I think we're the only town building that is not handicapped accessible. The ground floor has our meeting room and the bathrooms. And it's a lot of people in this town that won't go in there because they can't even go to the bathroom. So we decided this year we're going to fight the bullet and, um, and get an, a lift in there. We have retained Jones Winslet um, to do a feasibility study that we funded out of our own endowment. And that's ongoing. We're, you know, we, they, they designed a plan for us. Um, we have to be fully handicapped accessible in the building. And that's, it's not a big deal for us. It's a couple of handrails in addition to the lift. Mm -hmm. okay. Once you exceed, once you exceed one third of the assessed valuation of the building, you have to upgrade everything. And in our case, it's really not a huge expense. It's just a couple of handrails. Um, and then the lift will, of course, be, uh, be there. So Jones Winslet is doing a feasibility study. Um, that was $7,500 that's been paid for. The second phase will be the architectural study, and that's what I've requested for the capital budget. Okay. Um, we will have a pretty good idea of what this job will cost once the feasibility study is done, which should happen in a few weeks. And I may want to adjust that request for the architect, because it's based on 15% of the construction. We didn't know. We were guessing. So I'll have a better answer for you guys. As soon as I have that, I'll let you know. Because I, we may not need the full amount that we've requested. I hope I'm not shooting myself in the foot. <laughs> <front, but. laughs> so you're assuming it's going to cost 300000 No, 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 no. It will not. It will not. We're going to... Um, we're going with a platform elevator, that platform lift, which is considerably less expensive. It's all it needs is an attendant and room for an attendant in a wheelchair. We are taking the bathroom, the ladies' room, and making it a, an all-gender bathroom uh, with a security lock on it. Um, and the men's room will just become, a, 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 again, an all-gender bathroom. You only have to have one accessible one for a wheelchair. Okay. So, once the feasibility study is complete, they will estimate what the construction costs will be, and then the architectural fees are based on a percentage of that. So, Fred, is that the kind of lift that's at the town hall? I would guess, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a lift. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And what did that? Well, what, what, what was that lift? It's, it's hard to say. The, the lift itself was like thirty-eight or 40000 but. Yeah got the contractor's work to sure. build the, the shaft for the lift, so you're maybe, I'm guessing, 100000 the most for that. Now you've got other bathroom improvements and all that, so. Well, we, we, the, the bathrooms, um, we do not need new wiring, we do not need new plumbing, we don't need new walls. So the footprint's big enough for the bathroom? Yep. Yeah, we'll good. take out the, take out the petitions. Yeah, you won't have to delete one stuff around. Yeah. So that's going to that's going to save a, a considerable yep. amount of money. We're only going to do one. We only have to do one. Mm -hmm. Okay. The one of the challenges there is that building was built in 1949. That was the beginning of the Cold War. It yes. was a bomb shelter. And they yeah, we still have signs down there, um, so we know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the tip. And, and to give you an idea of how it's built, the floor thickness that we have to go through is 20 inches of concrete. Wow. So that's a challenge. <coughs> I'm sure it's doable, but that's, that's how thick that will so it. Blast it. Blast it. Mm. So you said if you go above, what, one-third of the 
valuation of the building, mm -hmm. you have to upgrade everything. When, when you say everything, what, what does that mean? It means that you have to have the proper handrails, the proper door openings. Okay. That's essentially what okay. bathrooms have to be accessible. In other words, the public, <coughs> general public has to be cool with the entire building. Yeah. <coughs> so one no challenge we have is the, is the stacks. You can't get a chair into the stacks. Mm -hmm. But if you made them accessible, you would have to eliminate some stacks, which you don't want to eliminate the collection. So the architect feels that that's a good, that's a waiver that we can seek to get rid of that. No, we all, we all know the library is a definite asset <coughs> in the town. And over the last couple of years, um, the individual in your position, whomever that was, uh, would always come in with a census of sorts. Um, utilization by the town. Um, is that still being recorded? Are you still staying up to date with that? So we get an idea of is this being utilized to the extent that it was or not? Yes. Every time a patron comes in, we mark, put a hash mark on We have a piece of paper. So for every hour open, I put whoever is working at the desk, be it me or my assistant, we put a hash mark to keep track of how many patrons come in. Um, if there's a program, we count how many patrons have come in for programs. I don't, um, I know that we have, as of right now, we have 613 Waitley residents registered for library cards. And our circulation for the current, uh, for this previous fiscal year was about 8,135 bucks. And on average, we have about 200 patron or 200 visits per month. It could be the same patron every week or a couple times a week, but yeah. we are still very busy in being used. Is this your total budget for the library? Yeah. So what are you doing with the grant money that you're receiving? How is that? That that would be to fund the uh, <coughs> the lift, the handicap accessibility. That's your question? Okay, so where does that, that's not reflected here in this table, and any money that you spend for that grant isn't reflected in this table then either, right? No, well, uh, I know. No, there's <laughs> nothing in here that reflects from the grant. No, there's no, none of this money we're requesting today. That's our annual operating budget. That's all it is. Okay. Right, but you've got grants or you call it endowments or, or whatever that also don't they also fund your activities are oh, you talking about the endowments yeah um, as needed Fred um, that is a rainy day fund for us we've had to dip into it in the past um, and we try to restrict the use of that because we any monies that we would use would be the interest and we use them for only special projects Like the feasibility study of doing right. the handicap, yeah, right. so it wasn't the burden to the taxpayer. Yeah, <coughs> they're taking the first seventy-five right. out of yeah. their stuff. Yeah. Okay, but, but still, you, uh, I would assume you, <coughs> you got that number in some account or some budget amount to know that you have how much you, oh, whatever yeah. in your endowment, and you're spending seventy-five hundred this year. Yeah, yeah that's report on the special revenue accounts. It's so it's a document that I used to get monthly, and the, the trustees review that on a monthly basis. Okay, and there are several different pieces to that. There's monies that were left for people who in their in their lit wills. Mm -hmm. uh, there's state aid that we get twice a year, and that's like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, so what's the total health of the library right now? Fin financial health of the library outside of town. Taxation. Okay. So I think that's what Fred said. Yeah, kind of. Because so we'll like, yeah. let's just cut to the chase. The last report I had from Mr. Ellsworth. The total monies, and we have monies that um, are expendable and some that are not expendable. Okay. Okay. If we added everything up together. 
there's a hundred and thirty seven thousand sixty two dollars and fifty one cents how much of the expendable the expendable amount that we have had to work with <coughs> is, at this point is twenty one thousand six forty seven that I could tap into if I needed to for emergencies yeah. gotcha. and the non-expendable in the uh, spirit of the word endowment is money that you're keeping that you make interest on and that yes. interest goes towards the expendable column in exactly. the future year. So the, the, we have 100 and, uh, 105,120 that is in the non-expendables and all of the interest <coughs> in that goes into the expendable amount. You cannot touch this. Then there was another 10,000 in books that people want. And that's kind of a common because we have to spend 20% of the municipal budget for books. Yep. And Cindy has found a way we can use some of that 10,000 without jeopardizing mm -hmm. the other. Good. 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 Times have changed, you know. Sure. The folks left money before they didn't know about the mm -hmm. rules today. Yeah. yeah. But so that's. So the 45,000 that's in the capital improvement budget yeah. for the library yeah. is for the architecture? Yes, it is. Okay. It's for bidwood ready drawings. And Tommy, I, as I said before, that could be decreased. And we'll have okay. a better picture of that very shortly. Yeah. So you think that's, that lift is going to be in the back or is it going to be in the front? Right in the middle. Okay. Inside. Oh, so you got to come in for us and then you get it. <coughs> yep, okay. there's a utility closet up on the first floor and yep. on the second floor. They're over one another. Yep. And that's where it's going to go. I'm going to have a drawing, by the way. The outside the that they have now is has been approved as accessible, handicap accessible, with a waiver or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we so, just have to put some pipe rails yeah. on it. As long as they stay with that, then the only stuff is from closet to closet, mm -hmm. inside. Yep. So it's not a major construction as far as building like we had to with the uh, Tom Hall. Right. This is going to be stripping and modifying an existing area. So the facade of the building is going to stay the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Are you expecting that to be done this year, calendar year, or next year? Yeah. We're, we're going to get it done. <laughs> okay. I'm determined I'm going to get this thing done. Good. I helped, I helped Don Sluter get into the West Whateley Chapel this summer, and I promised him that it's going to get done. Oh. That's good. That's, that's a good thing. So the, mo the money that we have being asked for is, is $45,000, but that, do we have any thoughts about where the construction, the money to pay for construction would come from? We're going to be looking at grant money, primarily, which is, I'm told by the architect, is, is pretty readily available. But you have to have a plan in order to get it. So that's going to be a tough part. We're going to have to go out and do a lot of grant research to fund yeah. this project. Yeah, but you got to have that architect. <coughs> got to have it. Full design ready in order to do it. Yeah. So. And we don't want to be put on a waiting list for 10 years. It's going to be done. We want to get it done right yeah. done. <clears throat> so this first step has to be done to get anything else done. Yep. Let her rip. Alrighty. Thank you very much. Any Thank further you. questions? Go ahead. Just one more. I, I guess it be more of an observation, and partly because our meeting's being uh, televised eventually. Um, I noticed in the budget there aren't any line items for your programming. Um, except to the extent that the library and the assistant are facilitating that as part of their job. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you get cultural council grants yeah. and uh, Friends of the Library raises money and so on. Yeah. So so this budget doesn't reflect any of the programming. The programming is from other, like small grants, I would say, as opposed to the large grant you were talking about. That's correct. Um, right. you, so part of your job is to go get those grants, apply, and then make the programs happen. So people see, like in the scoop, a whole list of like, oh, we're doing this, that, and the other thing. Those aren't necessarily paid for out of your taxpayer's money. Correct. No. Uh, except to the extent that the librarian is facilitating and the librarian is taken out of there, right? Yes. The, uh, you'd have to pay for the librarian regardless of whether you have a program or not. Okay. Right. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that my understanding was correct. And, and all of our programs are free to the public. And so 
everyone is welcome to come. Yep. And the friends do <coughs> accept donations. Yep. I've got one question. For, for the library building is going to require a hookup fee for the water district? Yes, they are. And will that be a line item in the library budget or will that be no, some that will yeah. be part of the town? Um, we're assuming, okay, I'm just we're assuming that will be part of the town. Yeah. Okay, well, that's that. <laughs> that's the yeah. Okay, See, I just didn't know accounting wise where it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, that'll that'll be in a town town part of that process. Okay. I didn't know. Yeah. Good question. But um, I, I guess not to belabor this any further, but it, it's good what you explained. You know, you've got your endowments, and, and what Joyce was saying, you you got other program activities that are funded with other sources. I, I guess I was looking for one document that had all this financial data in it, so we can see the total picture of the library. You should be a library trustee. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, uh, Fred, you would think that should, that should exist, though, for at least for trustees. But it's not uh, the library uh, trustees. Yeah, that's not our. Well, to see how this fits <laughs> in with the total picture. I mean, are we funding? Uh, I mean, is this a? Uh, 90% of their total budget or 50%? I, I, I guess I have no idea. All we see right now is what they are asking in, of the town, the town right. in order to meet the needs of that building and that and what they need to do. But you bring up a good point because they are not the only department no, that yes. we have that issue with. Uh, okay. For instance, you're going you're, you're gonna to have um, the um, Athletic um, rec, rec, the rec committee will come in here. Now so they collect all kinds of fees, fees for and it's a revolving fund. And 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 there's all kinds of revolving funds out out there that we never see on these documents. We can ask questions, which is yeah. what some of this is for. Right. Okay, to find out exactly what the financial health of each of these departments are. Right. But we don't see that, and we've talked about this for a very long time. And I have a feeling that. That scams is probably going to has something similar to that as well, um, but yeah, it's you're right. But but I thought I was reading somewhere, maybe Brian can correct me on this. That there is a requirement that all these de all these departments or committees or whatever that have revolving funds are supposed to report on the expenditures of, of that revolving fund every year to I guess the town. I, I don't see any of that. That's like what you're saying. I don't know. But those reports exist. Oh, they do? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it'd be something the state would want to have on yeah. hand. Yeah. But yeah. Is, that, is that something that this, that these committees, this committee should look at, should see? Well, we've never had, a, had an never issue. Um, we've never seen it come to us in the form in a form within the budget. But we've never had an issue in trying to get the information. Okay. See, when they come and you just ask them. Yeah. He well, told, what would we do with it if we had it? You, you know, if we had it, we wouldn't do anything with it. You know? So <laughs> when, get it. When, say, wow. when each department comes in, <clears throat> you know, we ask them those questions, right. and it's a good question. Um, it's not a secret. He's not the only one that knows it. I mean, there's all the trustees get a report. And then you know the same thing with the rec commission. So when they come in, we'll yeah. find their cemetery. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Same thing, possibly. And just so you know, every month when the trustees meeting, we're meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. I'll show Joyce. This is the spreadsheet of right up and through this fiscal year to a current date on what we've spent and what we've got left. Yeah. So we review that, and the second page to this is the special revenue account. But I haven't been able to access that because of the lack of our and I would have that if I had that information. But it's good to know that, you know, you have a finite amount of money that you can tap into yeah. um, the need be. You know, right. So Cindy's going to be on notice as of this month to watch <laughs> her money because we've only got yeah. four months left. Yeah. Right. We do have an interim account. Let me know what reports you want. Special as of last week, we have an interim account. Yeah, I'd like the special revenue account. We can okay. do that. Okay, thank you very much.
Nice job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. This was not as fun as I was. <laughs> We're a fun group. Here. I know, but this is my first time coming. Yeah. It's because yeah. it's laid out. That's well, we don't we'll see you next year. year. We don't fight. We're scary. It's, it's, it's actually it's actually four thirty, and everybody's biological clock. So it's still early. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Good luck. See you. Okay. All right. So next on the um, on the docket here. Is, um, Who's got somewhere to be? Let's do public safety. Let's do public safety. Since they're sitting here. It's an excellent, excellent yeah. suggestion. Seat of wheat. Next? See, I gotta fight John it, for it. It, it, it doesn't public. matter who goes first or players. Oh, John's gonna go. I think John was here first. first. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you go first. You can stand by and first sit by. Jesus, John. You can do that. Yeah, I don't have to next Oh. All right, that's going to be a long one. Mm -hmm. I can tell already. Nine, nine point four percent, John. How much? Nine point four percent increase. <laughs> Should I know the answer to that, Tommy? Yeah. Oh, no idea. Why? Well, obviously, because some of the line items went up to cover the so. cost. Yeah, someone the, went down. Why did the line items go up, John? Point to me, Tommy. I'm not sure which one we're looking at. Well, it's maintenance the, went up three thousand dollars. Well, they're getting older. You got a brand new one. Yeah, but the old ones get older. They still break down. When when we when I send my trucks out on the 91 to pump water for 12 hours, the old ones still break down, like just like the new ones. The new ones is more expensive to fix. Fire equipment replacement and repairs, two thousand dollars. <coughs> what are you replacing or repairing that is not in vehicle maintenance? There's, I don't believe there's anything scheduled to be replaced. It's just repairs. maintenance and as, as needed. And as you know as well as I do, at the end of the year, if there's extra money, then I will replace things. Didn't answer my question. Was I supposed to, Tommy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you didn't answer my question. Can you repeat it? What am I replacing? I don't know. Well, it's ten thousand dollars. What are we looking at? Fire equipment replacement and repair. Fire equipment replacement and repair. Seems to go up and down. It seems to go yeah. eight. 11, 11, 8, 8 12, 12. Well, that's the appropriation of the spending. The budget is at 11. Yeah, every eight. year of the appropriation yeah. spending. And he spends 11. So, right. Right. about time the upset. Right. So yeah, but what's he spending on? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. and where does the money come from? Taxpayer. No, where does the money come from in this budget? Most of the time, that's excess out of the salaries. So, the salaries. Or expended or strange things like I, I have no internet in the fire station uh -huh. and that would be used in a different line item. yeah it was just like looking at different places where the expended was less than so somehow you got from other categories yeah. something of order four thousand dollars in 2018 and if you look at the water and ice rescue there was got shaped, well it was bought because we bought new ice rescue suits last year it wasn't charged for the proper line item and i don't know where it went to <coughs> and, uh, there's a, what's the KFF grant? Match? That was a match fund that we had. We applied for one year. If I got the grant, then we'd get the grant. Oh. Okay, so the match money probably went to. No, there was no match money. We didn't get any match money. We didn't get the okay. grant. Oh, we, okay. we, we wrote a grant to the fire truck that we bought a few years ago. Uh -huh. And we got, we didn't get the grant towards that. I think that's what it's right. Called. Well, if, I, if you look at the total appropriated was forty three thousand and the total spent was fifty thousand. I was just wondering how that worked. Such a big difference. Hey. Uh, I really don't know the answer to that, Joyce, off the top of my head, because this I get this paperwork. Okay, well, and that's what it was. But some of it, if you look at the top of that page, Joyce, uh, under salaries. 
he yeah. appropriated twenty thousand three thirty, right. and he only spent sixteen six seventy eight. So he didn't turn the money back in. He turned around and spent it on the <clears throat> on the lower stuff. Yeah, but still, he spends every nickel we give him, one way or another. I yeah, do. Right. Yes, and, very hard. Right. And about four thousand dollars more. So somewhere along the line, he he got four thousand dollars for something. You didn't overspend your budget. No. I, well, last year I did. I have to say that I did last year because it was all spent in salaries, and we were out on a highway. Yeah, for but hours didn't, and didn't hours. we or aren't we going to get reimbursed for yes. that? Yes, yes, you will get reimbursed for that. I, who knows when that Ethel Roberts is going to pay that bill? But yeah, and that will go. I think they have. Huh? I think they the have. General fund. Really? It was in the general. Were fund. you going to tell me? Someday. Yeah. What? You want to spend it? No. I just want. I just. I just kind of like to know. Bill. I just heard that maybe we have it. Maybe we have it. So okay. there you go. Okay. So Brian, how do we? Uh, the how fire do, department how do we account is, for that. Okay. How do we account for the money that comes in? Yeah. I mean, how do we? Um, better account. Adjust. Yeah, that's another one of those Budget accounts. Or how do we uh, uh, rationalize that John overspent his budget when we got the money back from FL Roberts? You rationalize it because we send them a bill, but by law. I know that, but I'm talking about to satisfy everybody's ego here. In, oh. tr in terms of the mechanics, it goes to the general fund. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any idea how much it was? Uh, Ballpark? The, probably made money. We probably made money. On no. We did. We made, we made money. There was, there was, it was, there was payments to a bunch of, there was also payments to a di several different agencies. Yeah. Who responded, so I don't know what the total <coughs> uh, coming back to weight was. Yeah. Each one of my engines, I think the bill was like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. We had three of them out there. Yeah. For twelve or fourteen hours. It was it was a long day and everybody's ball parked up. Yeah. But okay. only, and it was only billable because it was hazardous material. Right. Yeah. But it does come back to the town and it's if we are made aware of it, it gives us an overall sense of the cost of the department. It's just like the police. I didn't know. I didn't know it was paid around with police. We never <coughs> see that. See, we never see what I they write out on the highway or, or what it's written on five, five and ten, um, and all those receipts that come back into the town. You know, when you add all that up, and compare that to what the cost of the police is. I mean, I think it has an impact. It was a ten thousand dollar bill. I thought. I don't remember what it was. I don't remember. I just heard very recently that. So the new truck, John, is good. <coughs> it is good. Yeah. Hasn't been back to the shop yet. Oh, that's good. They came on one day. I think they, they had heater issues, but. Uh -huh. Okay. And if everything's good at the stations and. and it's good. We, I got a capital. I got a capital. I got a capital. Yep. Oh, they're both for that new truck. Well, once no, once is a new truck and once for his house. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I won't send any more texts, Tommy. Okay. No, no, I'm not. I'm not worrying about that. Okay. Um. I don't know. I guess I, I have one. I don't know whether to c call it a con concern. Sure. But uh, let me put it out there. Um, <clears throat> in the sense that it. Um, it, it seems like the line items where you're asking for big increases are places where you've overspent in the past by, uh, in some cases, way more than you're asking, in some cases, comparable to what you're asking. In other cases, not. But I, I guess I'm a little more worried that the line items themselves might not be meaningful. Yeah. In You're probably right, Trace. So what line, then, what line are you looking well, at? I looked at 2018, yeah, but what, where what? lots of things were were um, appropriated, but not expended. Just look at vehicle maintenance for mm -hmm. one. I, that, I, that one comes right to the top of my list. Right. So little, the, and for the previous year, vehicle maintenance was over by like 5,000. There was over by 17,000. 17. Right. So so that seems like it's, it's a little unpredictable. But that one is consistently over. Right, but what did you do? Like, did you just slum it for postage and office supplies? <laughs> you, know? you can or, ask. You can ask that of every department that comes in here. Because we, we don't 
strictly go right. by a line item budget. Right, and, and so the $780 for internet, are you all of a sudden going to start getting internet and you're going to get it a if lot cheaper? I have cheaper? to get it. I will know. I will, if, I get, if I have to get internet, right. I will get it. But personally what I do for internet is this, yeah. to me, I think, I believe it's foolish to put it in the fire station, but if I have to, if I have to do it to file my fire reports for the state, I will. Uh -huh. What I do now is I go to the fire station, I do my fire reports, and I download them on a thumb drive, thumb drive yeah. or on a desk, right, uh -huh. like old school. I take it home and I send it to the state. It, to me, yeah. that saves the town away the eight hundred okay. something dollars. And well, I think it's well, well, then why don't we take seven hundred eighty dollars out of Comcast and put it into vehicle maintenance? Is, is there a way to make what we're actually spending things money on align with what's reported here? Yeah, they a did that a few years. Uh, they did that a couple years ago when they put numbers on all my line items. That's what a lot of those things are showing up. Uh, yeah, because it, it's a big increase, a 14% increase. And if you don't really know where it's going, sure, then it's, harder to, it's I, harder to support because from here, I couldn't, like, if you didn't spend anything on postage or office supplies or internet or pre employment or water and ice rescue uh, or a grant match. Well, of course, the grant match, you're not asking for anything this year. But we don't really know. Are, are those really just buffers for the, water for the uh, replacement repairs? I guess I, I, it's just, it's a concern. And I right. don't know how big a concern right. it ought to be because I don't know. The fire department is probably as well as I should. The water and ice equipment was spent last year for ice rescue equipment, and, I, and for whatever reason, I don't know why, how it got charged to a different line item. Maybe probably, vehicle, maybe vehicle maintenance. Maybe probably fire equipment. Or maybe vehicle maintenance, because that's on the 27th. Yeah, it could, could very well be. I don't Like I said, I don't know where it went to. But when so, it comes back at the end of the year, it's like it's so easy for me to just put the numbers together. And it's, oh, what happened to that? I know what it was back because I had the vice rescue control. We could just take it all out and then you could come and ask us for money during the year. I, that, that's my question to Brian. If he comes in every month, <coughs> no, but I mean, he's come in There's none to check. Never mind. Thanks. Uh, in the past and asked for, you know, four or five thousand for hose replacement or, you know, like when he got new hose to go on the new fire truck. I never did. Yeah. Did that? show up as like vehicle maintenance is that if it was a separate appropriation then no it shouldn't have it shouldn't have okay. no because that, be that just that's plan. you know seventeen thousand eight almost eighteen thousand dollars that yeah i mean he spent it but basically i don't know what he spent it on or where he got the money from yeah and, and, and so, no faith that that seven really thousand. he didn't overspend his right. budget he got the money somewhere so to answer that question i was i was just looking at the at the report here four thousand roughly four thousand of it was from the salaries that, that yeah. joyce that identified was, yeah. and then we did a reserve fund transfer that was shortly after the act the incident on, on i-91 we did a reserve fund That's transfer for, for for between i don't remember was i think it was thirty six hundred dollars so that's, I think, where that difference of around seven, seven yeah. grand comes from, um, yeah. for the general expenses. Right. To, to Joyce's point, <coughs> and I hope we can do this internally when when the new account starts. Is these don't map? You're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna look at budgets here, and there's different. There's probably 150 different line items, right. different names for things, and it would be great if we could standardize it because. Because trying to track this in the current report, in terms of in trying to figure out who spent what on Everybody what, calls it something is a nightmare. Yeah. Um, and there was a little bit of resistance to, to changing before, but I hope when we when we get the new person in, then we could start from sort of, yeah. sort of start fresh. When we standardize these line items, we're going to lose a little bit of detail, um, I think. And if, if that's not important, it is um, the Fred to everybody then I mean not a ton but obviously if yeah. if we if we call something you know equipment while well, we don't know if it's fire equipment rescue equipment <coughs> those types of things but so there's got to be happy medium somewhere <coughs> um, but I would love to get these more standardized sure you, 
the concern I have, not, not only this, this budget, Paul, but, but other ones here, some of these items that, and I guess I don't think I'd budget my own budget this way. 3500 for an item that you, you're routinely spending 1299 1400 and you're continuing 3500 a year. Yeah. For what? You've got two or three of these that way. There's well, to make items. a long story short, the budget should be standardized, like Brian said, because office supplies and postage shouldn't be on everybody's budget. Right. Okay. But, but some of these were there are expenditures, not, not only electricity department, but, but other ones. For three or four years, you, you can track, you can see the numbers, but nowhere near what's in the budget. It's like, we'll keep that number in there as a slush fund, so if we override that's, something else, we can, we can borrow it. That's what that. he's doing. That's not a budget. We give him a total amount of money and it's he spends it the way he wants. Right. It's an, yeah, it's an allotment. It's an allotment, right. but, but, but let's but be that's true about what your electricity costs are, right. what, your, mm -hmm. what your gas costs are going to be. Let's put a number in there that's realistic, not a, a 3500 that's, yeah. Yeah. you know. So it, let's just let me say one thing, okay? My budget is directly <laughs> proportional to the number of times my pager goes off. So and who knows what that's going to be? Yeah, that goes. My point right exactly. Now. The heat goes up. The lights go on. Right. You know, door opens up. The salary goes up. The heat goes out. I mean, I don't. Yeah. You know, sure. There's certain years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could go out on 91 every other day. Yeah. 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 And my my salary bill on just on 91 alone in a month's time could be three thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. And I, you know. I come, guess want me to come back and beg? Yeah. So this, no. I don't like begging. No, but, but maybe it ought to be that the uh, the vehicle maintenance line yeah. doesn't go up to thirteen fifty. Maybe it ought to go up to twenty thousand. If you really see that the that the trend is that you you need to maintain the older vehicles more and more and more, then we could then maybe that should be a, a much higher number. And these other things that you don't really expect. Let's just get rid of them. Yeah, I think you when looking, you're looking because at history. Makes, you're looking at history of the older truck. We've replaced the truck since then, right? So that throws that theory out right now. This, this Your black truck is the new one. Yeah. Okay, so it's so in between here and here is when the new truck so, came. Yeah, yeah but there's two arguments last year. <laughs> this you is a reporting budget. budget. This is a reporting budget. This is not a management tool right, right now. Yeah. And I think some of the arguments here are going towards, it'd be nice if this was a management yeah. tool <laughs> for you. But, but we're not being really nice. We're not, that's not gonna happen. That's that's not not you know, right. um, but just to kind of, when, when people ask for an increase, you go back and kind of look for a reason. And I can sort of see a reason on these for things going up. But the very first thing you said was some things went up and some things went down, and, and actually nothing went down. I don't say anything went down. So I, I, that's it, it. It would be harder. It's going to be hard to defend a, a seven percent increase uh, when, when it can't really point to something like you know when it, when when, it, when I've got the, the this history in front of me. Does that make sense? I mean, no, I'm, I'm just bad. No, not at all. Because it's a, it's unpredictable. It's unpredictable. It's not a so you it's see not, over budget it, because the you should budget. you should over budget because I don't want you to come out to say I need more. Yeah, money. but the, yeah. the the problem is if he has a, a real s slow year, no different whatever, than the school. No we different than the, the money back. That we're right. We don't. No, we don't. And we're gonna go, we're gonna have another discussion about the school. Yeah. There's some other things I found out. Yeah. Okay. Don't bring them up now. Yeah. No. Okay. You know, John has historically spent all the money we give him one way or another. And, so. and this is the first time in 16, 17 years it's actually gone over. To the best of my knowledge. What do you mean went over? Went over my my budget. You oh, went over that, that, that but that all had to do with but, how many calls you went on. Just one. Yeah, one call. Just one. Right over the edge. Yeah. And you know what? I called the boss that afternoon from the command post and says, I ruined my budget. Didn't I? We already knew you were on the budget. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Um, okay. Anything more on. on this page? No. Okay. We go to capital. Your capital request. Capital. Any reminder? So we, do I need a reminder? Yeah. There should only be two there. requests on there. Anybody find it? I read it this morning. I got it right here. I bought it. I printed it. 
And can you use bigger print, please? No, you got a print bigger. Number. You got to buy a bigger printer. Worksheet three. That's my own printer. Oh, yeah. Maybe on office supplies I could charge. Maybe you should buy a bigger printer. Worksheet three. Replace four inch holes okay. with five inch holes, 13.7. Yeah. And replace siding for 31.5. What's the deal with the siding? The I, holes in it. I know. This is my question. Oops. Sorry. Are we throwing good money after bad by putting siding on this building? What's the rest of it like? Are we going to replace the building? I don't know. You oh. tell me. It's, it's right inside. I know it's. that's not my question. Structurally, how is it? Well, structurally, it's a steel building. It's, it, it, it's not going anywhere. There's no. There's nothing wrong with the structure. All right. The Perfect. siding is getting shitty, it, cheesy at the bottom. Yep. So it's rotten. It's rotting. It, yep. it, it's, I, they paint, we painted it a couple yeah. years ago. We put a roof on it a few years ago. Yeah. How old is it? The siding, too. No. How old is it? Oh, what? The roof or the building? The building. Yeah, it's almost 50 years. Yeah. So it's probably all of this life expectancy. Yeah. Well, the siding has. Yeah, it's up, it's, the size is actually, we've outgrown the building itself. And I've actually made a request to the capital planning committee that we should consider building a new fire station, but we don't talk about things like that. Big so. money. So it is big money. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is. And, and I just, you know, I just don't, no. I don't want to stuff rags in them. And holes, but, and I think, huh? Why not? I don't, you know, I, don't, I just don't think that's the way it should go, Tom. Well, some people have their standards, and it's just how it is. The, um, the story, let's start with, yeah. uh, let's keep going with the siding. But so, is that a solid number or? Yeah, I can get the job done July 1st for that. And my thought on that was, uh, I talked to uh, Jim Ross, Jr. JDR. He wants to uh, bring, pad it out with two by fours and put vinyl siding on it. Because if we start, if you open it up, if you take the metal down, then you've got a layer of insulation and you've got insulated finish work. So you have all of that. And if you did that, it would keep the stop the okay. You keep the water out of it. And I, I thought that was a reasonable, a reasonable number. So I only got one. So goal. he gave you that number. Huh? That's from JD. Yep. I think that, that there's a problem with that number because I don't think he really got involved in what it's going to take to match that to your gutter system or the roof, which is a special type of design. And right now you are there as far out as you can go. So you're going to have to move the gutter out, which is attached to the roof. I met I met with Mr. Ross that day, and he said this is the number that he would do. He could do the job for it. I don't, you know, I didn't get up there and measure the gutters with him. He didn't take the gutters off, so I don't, you know, that's. So it's going to be no roof involvement. So the gutters are attached to the roof. Yeah, there's no overlay. There's no overhang. There's under. no overhang on the roof. Oh, okay. The gutter is right yep. there on the siding, probably out mm -hmm. six inches, but that's it. That's the gutter. Now, if you want to box it out and put vinyl on, where's the gutter going to be? He wasn't going to box the whole thing out. He was just going to pad it out so that the ribs would be the, right. the outside rib would be the outside. The attaches the side. Oh, so. okay, he's, yeah. padding out, he's padding out between the ribs. Yeah. yeah. You know, what's, what's, I guess, different, I don't know if it's come out in any of the correspondence Brian has sent of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee was kind of reorganized this year. Uh, I've been a member, Brian was, I think Dan was, we had uh, Nicholas Jones and uh, Kate Edwards from the school committee and we've, we've got two more me members we're adding. Uh, what we did was we, we looked at all these requests, we talked about them in, in the office and we went out and looked at to actually see what was the degree of the improvement they're looking at and and this one particular I, I i would say we have mixed emotions as to whether that's the way to fix the siding i mean you got holes in it but you got holes if you get holes in your car you're going to replace the whole body of your car or you're going to patch the holes you don't get that far <coughs> well i, I, I guess some yeah. of us feel that there there's there's other ways to address the, the issue rather than spending the thirty one thousand. Uh, and and that's why I think it got 
rated so far down the list in, in the category C because we weren't sure that that was the right way to, to fix the problem. So, uh, me, they went in based on, on either the, the one recommendation you got and, and I guess some of the, our committee's knowledge of building construction, we just, we just weren't comfortable with that. Yeah. And we hate to see the town throw money at something that's not the best way to fix it. Well, Fred, I don't think we'd go forward on a one bid, one idea approach to any building in town. You can't hire, you can't exactly. hire him straight out. Well, I wasn't planning on that. that yeah, but that oh, they don't have to go out to bids. Hey, let me let me back up just a little bit. Then, as far as I understand, my job is to if I have a problem with my building, I would go to the capital planning and report it. Now, I believe there's a problem. Now, I guess the town can do what they want to do with this. If there's no money, so be it. Then they won't fix it. But I don't think that we should have holes in the side of the fire station. I, you know, and you know. You're absolutely right. What, so whatever we're going to do, mm -hmm. I'm reporting to the town of Whaley yeah. that we need to fix the siding on the fire station. Okay. And I got a price for and it. And that was one one price. That, that is one have. price. Right. Now, if the committee one, one or the option. capital planning committee, because they rank my siding low, they want to build up a new fire station. That's fine to me. Mm -hmm. But. I, I reported to a committee that meets once a year. Yeah. Three times. I understand that. Three times. I understand that. Three times. I understand that. Yeah. More than once. Um, so the only, so let's, let's just step back. When you look at the building, it's obviously a metal fabricated building. It's a butler building, yes. Okay, so the siding is sheet metal? Yep. Okay. So then J.D. Ross, who is, I think, is a good guy. He's worked in my house. He's, he knows his stuff. He's wood and nails guy. He's not going to be putting up. He's not going to be putting up sheet metal. No. He doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation would be let's get a guy that does sheet metal to take a look at. Maybe it's maybe it just has to do half the wall. That would be my thought. But you know, and he tucks it I underneath, looked at it. rivets it in. I don't know. I mean, I don't do that kind of work, but it is a metal building. It's it's stamped sheet metal. So I would approach someone who does, who's in that trade to take a look at it. That may come back and it may be $60,000. And we go, oh, JD, call him up, get him in. But until then, I, th I think you have to look at that other option, John, if, if you can. Or, I hate to throw the capital planning committee under the bus again. I yeah. met with them mm -hmm. at, down there, and this is the first time I've heard anything about that. Yep. We, we didn't decide at that, view, at that viewing what, what we were going to fund or not. That was not the purpose to no. say, okay, John, we agree with you and we'll, give, we'll recommend 31,000. Well, I understand. That I, was I, not the purpose. It's the system, I guess. Well, we're changing the system now. We're meeting more than once a year. Yeah, but and it's, we've had people it's not on there capital that planning's job to, it's working the way it's supposed to. It comes to this committee with those recommendations, with the numbers that you gave us and we, we assigned priorities. That's what capital planning does. Now, we work on the project. It's just starting now, okay? Okay. So one of the requests that we are asking is that maybe we better get another idea, another estimate. From, okay. From a uh, <clears throat> I, fabricator. <clears throat> I'll be happy to. Yeah. And I like the idea that he had, so that's why he got it. Yeah. And in the end, it may be, it may be the idea. It may be the, <laughs> it may be the way, to, way to go, you know? We may find out sheet metal is extremely expensive, and having a guy come out and do it is going to be over the top. So, and JD's okay. approach may be the way to go. But I don't think you can approach us, and we can't approach the town. Unless we have an option, that's it. That's, it. that's, that's all I see. The other thing to keep in mind, I, I guess, the committee looking at the, the extent of what needed to be replaced. You stop on the way home, anytime you go by, and you look at, you can see where the holes are and where the rust yeah. spots are. Yeah, yeah. It is not a majority of the side of the building. It's 
and it happens in the front where the gutters are. Now maybe there's a problem with the gutters overflowing and dripping down the side of the building. You've got, you know, 10, 15 percent of the siding maybe that needs some, some that has holes. Not sand replacement. Has holes in it or rust spots. Yep. Yep. And the rust, 80 percent, to my knowledge, looks fine. So you're going to cover the whole building just to get rid of these little rust spot areas? No, that's not our gig, that's yours, you're on the capital. I know, he's, that's he's, that's what the he's capital already, is. He's already done the front, right? And uh, you dressed up the front because of rust. Because, of, well, yeah, because it was rusted through. Yeah, so that, you know, the, the face has been done. Yep. And where it is now showing up mostly is where the concrete stops and then you go over to the metal. Flow stops there coming down from the rain and everything else. It's but I don't think that, uh, I, I really, I agree with you. I think we should get a fabricator. He should get a fabricator and get an estimate. Yeah. Do you know who did the estimate? I think after that we'll take, we can hmm? you know who back his cap, capital planning and then maybe uh, we have a new number in him and maybe we don't, so. No, we don't. This is like a you know where I'm going to listen to hmm? How many years ago no. do you know? I, could always think I think we have responsibility to the town to do what's reasonable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah. And I think it's just way based on one estimate to me is not the way to go. Right. I mean, I, I, I think John agrees with that. I mean, wow. We're not against the job. We're, we're just it, trying no. to. No. It needs to be fixed. Yeah, it's an option. Yeah, well, the question is, is this a repair or a replace? Repair. Yeah, that's the <laughs> first, first question. It should be repair is what right. he's trying to do, but the option he got right. was. Was a replace. Well. Sort yes and no. Thing, it's yeah. not tearing off the old stuff. Well, that's the it, structure of the building. It's replacing the outside of the building, whether it's replacing the actual recovery. Yeah. 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 I think the bottom line, another bottom line here is it's the yeah. same with every built town building we have. Sure. Oh, yeah. I agree. We're trying to do something about it. I know. We're with you on that. Um, All right. What about the holes, John? Well, the new pump that we bought. A few years ago, came with no supply hose on. We took it off the old pumper and put it on the old pumper. And, I was, and working in conjunction with the water department, trying to upgrade the water system in the center of town, he put five inch hose on it instead of four inch hose. Okay. So, yeah. I, that means that means what? More water. Means we put more water to the fire. All my pumpers are 2,000, 1,500 gallons or better in the fire station, all three of them. And you put five inch hose in the street, I can put 2,000 gallons a minute through it instead of 1,000 gallons a minute through it. I can push water from, to the way in the end or to the town hall. It has no sprinklers in it with one pumper. Well, the elementary school doesn't have any sprinklers in it either. Any new ones. It has sprinklers in it. That's being replaced. Would be used anywhere in town. Anywhere you have a hydrant, you're going to use the five inch. Oh, absolutely. It's just so it's not just center of town. Typically, it's not bad if it's center of town. It's typically on a house fire, Fred, we wouldn't yeah. need that volume of water for a house fire. Yeah. Okay. You wouldn't need five inch hose. But it's the bigger buildings that you know the sprinklers fail. They don't have sprinklers. If the truck was built for a five-inch hose, that's what you should have. And you can put either one on. You can actually put either one of them on, but you, you put five-inch hose on it because it's... Wow. I didn't call you, Tommy. I sent you a text earlier. Please, please, please. That's about the four-inch that becomes your backup. The four-inch, well, eventually, I would rather like to replace all four-inch hose with five-inch hose and transfer the whole department over to five-inch. And then the four-inch goes to, like... Trash. Is I was going to say some other small town that can't afford it. Isn't there a uh, uh, state requirement on uh, how old the hose is to when it's got to get replaced? As long as it passes the annual test. So you have to test, test every length of hose? Yep. So the argument for the five inch hose has nothing to do with water, it's your ability to save a building in, in at any given moment more effectively right sure <laughs> <laughs> well, 
So if you're down on it, long plane it, road, it overrides the friction loss, so you can actually lay more hose and get more water with one truck. Can you hook up to like on long plane road? Can you hook up to a hydrant with a five inch hose? We have to change over there. The, you have to adapt. In there, there is no. The, we you put the four and a half inch stop, uh, suction on, and on the, the coupling's on the fire hydrant, and then it's all five inch. It's a different hose. It's coming in and going out. Coming it'll be all. Okay. It'll be all coming five in, inch with it. Coming in, it's going to be five in inch going out. Off the it's going to be five yeah. inch. It'll be all five inch. Right to the next truck. So you're gonna have to go and change every fire hydrant in town. No, 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 no. no. Coming into the truck off the hydrant. It's fine. He's talking yeah, about all going it. out of the truck to the fire. Okay. All, yeah. the, the, right? yeah. all the supply hose on the truck will be converted over to five inch. Yeah. That's From right. the fire hydrant to the fire, or to the next fire truck up the street. Okay. When's the last time you replaced hose? You ever replaced them? No. Recently? No. Not recently. I don't. I'd have to. Not since you've been chief. No, I don't think so. I don't think I did. I think engine my engine two back in the at ninety came in with four inch hose on it. I always see well, that's good, right? All right. You can deliver twice as much water. Yeah. And because it overrides the friction loss. With less help, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, there, there'll be different issues with that. Because it's bigger, it's bigger hose weighs more. Bigger yeah. hose yeah. 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 Twice as many guys. Still. Need more guys at the end of the hose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank Any you, other John. questions for John before we go? Thanks for coming in. And. Uh, We'll I'm working on my line items. Yes. I'll be nice. Yeah. Could you go do that right now? <laughs> I can't. I don't have the numbers. I, I hope we can do this globally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, find out. It's really your responsibility. <laughs> you should know how much the the pay, uh, how much your receipts were going out and coming back into the town. Because theoretically, they don't tell me. Well, you got to ask them. Oh. You should know, so you come in, what time after what you spent the money on maintenance, you can tell them. Yeah. Not okay. Saying, not the big, that stuff. you know, I don't, I know of oil changes and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, for the amount of money you spend on maintenance, you know, I don't know if you have, you, did you have a, a pump that cracked out, nope. you had to replace it, or I mean, what, where did the money go? Tires? I don't know. Did you ever put rod holders on the boat? Spend the money somewhere, John. I heard that. Cup holders were first. Yeah, cup, cup holders, holders were first. first. Cup holders in the new cup fire. Holders. <laughs> you know. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We got Zach waiting. Get those numbers. It's warmed up for you. Tough back to follow. I can tell you. That was a good spot letting him go for us. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> now you know what. Not Ain't my first <laughs> rodeo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We should have done this the other way. Yes, we okay. should. Here and we, we are. Can, we can have, here here's we the go. example. Where are we? Yeah, yeah. Yes, too. Just in case you guys want some supporting documents. Yeah. 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 Oh boy. Do you have your special revenue reports? Uh, <laughs> upon request, no problem. Yeah, I, we, um, I get a... I'm just kidding. Well, no request. All right. Um, I do. I, I get monthly reports about our expenses and our revenues. Revenues are usually a little like twenty or thirty days behind, um, but that's that's not a problem. Um, thank you for having me. I'm Zachary Smith. I'm the director of South County EMS, and I think you got the updated one. It was uh, approved by my VU on February 26, but there was no changes. Since the February what's, what's the bottom line? Make sure they got the same. Uh, the bottom line is we're seeing so eighty. Uh, bottom number. Say that again. The oh, weight. Where are we? One oh six oh eighty. Yeah. Yep. So uh, unfortunately, that's a zero point one six percent increase. Yeah. Um, the bad news is, um, and I'm being sarcastic when I say bad news. The good news is. Um, 
Well, first, how do we want to do this? Do you want me to start off at the top and we'll just go down? If you have questions, I'll kind of present the things that stand out to me. Why don't you do this? Yes. Okay. Well, let, let's show, show us where the big increase is. Sure, are. sure. Um, so the top section, personnel costs, salary wages, and employee benefits. As an enterprise fund and as an assessment of the three towns, we include the employee benefits in our budget, just so it's totally um, out in the open. Uh, we are all, because Deerfoot is a fiscal agent, all the employees are town of Deerfoot employees, which how means, many? what's that? How many? How many? Nine full time and then another 30 per diem. So we are governed by the town of Deerfield's personnel bylaws and we follow their recommendations as far as uh, the personnel committee's recommendations, step, coal, and things like that. So I've calculated the customary annual step for the employees and also a 2% COLA in these numbers. Uh, the Deerfield Select Board has yet to come down on a decision about whether or not they're going to include the COLA. If they don't include the COLA, we will see about a $13,000 reduction in the salary cost, which will actually result in a decrease in our budget of like one point something percent. Um, all of the employees, save for two, uh, would be entitled to a step increase next year. Uh, myself and one other employee, we've been with the town for so long, uh, we're maxed out and we would just get the 2% COLA. Uh, employee benefits, those are all for the town of Deerfield. So overall, there's a 3.5% increase there, the biggest ones. Um, medical insurance and the retirement, those are numbers that are provided to us from those outside agencies and um, they kind of are what they are there. There's a big discussion right now about OPEB uh, in Deerfield. Uh, there is no current line item in this budget for other post-employment benefits, that's what OPEB stands for. Um, but maybe in future fiscal years we may see that, that is a hot topic, but not included here. So that's personnel costs. Any questions there? All right. Uh, expenses, uh, you'll see just a, a very small increase there. Um, you know, fluctuations here and there, we're getting more and more years. Some of them are staying pretty consistent as the uh, earlier estimations were, were pretty accurate. Uh, you'll see uh, rent. Yeah, sharp decrease there. So that's because we are now in that new building. So where we were paying rent to Waitley, Sunderland, and the South Deerfield Fire District, we are now just paying $36,000 a year for this building. The flip of that, though, is now that we're on our own, we're responsible for all the utilities, all of those things, um, interior upkeep um, and maintenance of the building. So you'll actually see an increase further down under office expense. Um, there's within that, there's utilities, um, supplies, uh, internet, things like that. So there's a $10,000 increase in office expense and that's just because we're responsible for those things now. Some of that, um, like propane usage, is an estimation uh, just because we don't have a full year of occupancy yet. Some of it, like telephone, internet, we know exactly what that's going to be. So, um, who, um, who owns the building? Town of Deerfield. Uh, and the Town of Deerfield is responsible for anything like intrinsic to the building, both bolted to the building, exterior maintenance, things like that. I call up the highway department, same way that you deal with the town hall, and I say, hey, my boiler exploded, that type of thing. So, and the idea here is that the money that we pay in rent will be set aside for future needs of that building with a capital stabilization type thing. So we have a plan for the future for that building. The rub is legally that money has to go into the general fund before it can be moved to a separate building stabilization fund or something like that. So politically there is there is some concern there about assuring that that's going to happen. Yeah, of um, course there is. Yeah, well, and, and frankly, you can't blame anybody for getting a little, yeah. you know, anxious about it. It's, it's a legal hurdle right now. Um, there is language in the lease agreement to say that this is where the money is intended. So, uh, you know, it's three towns working together. We're going to have to take everybody's word on it. And then if something right. comes up, then we have to go to their town meeting yeah. and make sure. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing, too, uh, the other 
hot contention and hot topic recently is the indirect costs, those other town of Deerfield clerical expenses. Um, and that is in this budget as $73,253. Uh, the quick version of this is. But which like where, where is it? Um, is so it's under, it's under other payroll costs. Okay. Um, Okay, I see it now, thanks. Yes, yeah, $73,000 of the other payroll costs is, is these indirect costs. The short version is, at our inception in 2014, as dear for the fiscal agent, we had a huge CIC grant to buy all of our equipment. We had new staff coming on board, new hires, all those things associated. And it was decided, we can find the memos, um, that 10%, so, this gets a little complicated. Stop me if it gets confusing. They decided which town departments had a hand in make, doing the administration of South County EMS. So we're talking about treasurer collector, selectman's office, town accountant, um, HR people, things like that. And they took the expenses of those departments and 10% of that they figured at that time they were doing 10% of their time was going to get our department set up. They took 10% of their budget minus, you know, some a few things, contracted services, and that's what that number is. Everybody agrees that 10% seems pretty aggressive, especially considering, you know, we've got how many years now? Six years in, and um, it's probably not reflective of what reality is. The senior center and the wastewater treatment plants pay similar indirect costs, and they calculate it as a percentage of those departments' ratio of their budget to the overall town budget. If we do it that way, I think we're six point something something percent of the overall town budget. The bottom line is everybody says, okay, that feels way more appropriate, but it's still just a feeling. And the decision here was, okay, for FY20, instead of just randomly picking another percentage let's go with what we were doing and that and whenever we start working on the fy 21 budget probably september right <laughs> um let's let's get a report from those individual offices and say okay really itemize how much time your staff your resources are going because we don't want to pick 6.45 or whatever it is if it's actually three or it's actually eight Right. Well, yep. We want to make sure that it's that it's a fair representation. Sure. So that number is is calculated the same as it has been in the previous years, but we all expect a significant decrease in that for FY21. Um, uh, let's see, uh, we're streamlining a lot of things, so we're seeing a, a steep decrease in just our software fees. Um, we're getting smarter about the way we're doing things. Um, we don't have setup fees that we did previously. Um, and those are the things that stand out for me in the expenses. Any questions on any of those line items? Um, just what stands out to me is um, from an observer looking at this, you don't do any comparisons. You leave it up to the reader to look at the numbers and compare one year to the next and the percentages. Yes percent changes correct yeah so that what we like to do is go down look at the percent changes yeah. look at the dollar changes yeah and then flag them <clears throat> and have a dialogue on that so that if I could just make that recommendation then. yeah you're not the first person to make that recommendation another request was in between all these fiscal years have the actual amount expended right yeah um, those are all spreadsheets I work with. I have this ultra-wide <laughs> monitor. Um, and the, absolutely, 100%, that's something that we can do. Um, these spreadsheets, these forms, are actually the town of Deerfield Accountants forms. She gives me the blank form. I plug my numbers in, and it, it refers to everything. So that's where this comes from. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we hear that your uh, collection of fees is, is you have a backlog of, of what patients aren't paying and I know it's a three bills or collection agency. What, what are your efforts to improve that and how much difference is that going to make in the total budget? So there's a lot of misunderstanding about medical billing circulating right now in the three towns and what write-offs mean. 
Um, I asked you that last year, how much you were not people were. Yeah, so um, I, I will preface this by saying um, our collections are outstanding and the envy of a lot of communities. Uh, the, the way, a, a real quick primer on uh, medical billing, medical collections is um, we set fees for what our service is and they are universal. I can't say, oh, well, you've got this insurance and I'm gonna, you know, I'll only charge you this because I know you have like poor man's insurance and you have rich man's, that's insurance fraud. We have to say a BLS transport costs $800. An ALS service cost, transport costs 1200 period. So that's what we bill for our service. Every single patient gets paid the same object, or gets billed the same objectively. What happens on the back end is the federal government, for instance, for Medicare, in order for us to bill Medicare and get paid, the federal government forces us to sign a contract with them. And the federal government being the federal government, they say, that's great, you want 800, here's $300. Yeah. Go pound sand. Yeah. And the reality is that Quick math, five, that, dif that $500 difference is a write off. That, that's, we had to bill 800 legally. Legally, we're only going to get 300. So that remainder is a write off. Um, and this is just how medical billing goes. We have to provide a service. If you call 911, we're going to come. I can't run your credit card right. before a call and you know check your credit or something like that. So, this is just the reality of what, what but happens. But each carrier is the same way, right? Uh, we have the, we carry contracts with um, Medicaid, Medicare because we have to. Um, we don't have contracts with other insurance companies because we don't do any sort of interfacility transfers. We don't do prior authorization billings. That's when you'd have to have a contract. Mm -hmm. So by not having a contract, we bill our, our, our regular rate that everybody gets billed. And so usually what happens is an insurance company says, no, and then it gets appealed once and they go, okay, and then they pay it. Um, and that's what our, our billing company does on our behalf. So we have our total charges, which is the amount of money that we bill based on our rates that everybody gets. And then we have total allowable. And that's our way of saying, okay, well, but we know Medicare is gonna give us a percentage. So really, what are we allowed to bill under these rules? And then we have our collection. And we compare the amount that we collect to the amount that we're allowed. And that is indicative of what our collection rates are. So. Um, for FY18, um, and I can't use FY19 numbers because we're still collecting, you know, um, but for uh, insured patients, we're at 93% collection rate. That means that of the money we expect to get, we are getting 93%. What's that? It's actually 93.9. .9. So I'll say, what's that last 6%? Those are copays. Those are people who hit their max, you know, for their year on their insurance, and then they're put with, you know, the rest of the bill, the remainder of the bill, or the premiums, or, or, or things like that. That's where we're working hard. That's where Comstar electronically checks our data. They go in at least once every two weeks. It's usually every 10 days. They pull our data out electronically. We have what we call closed call rules in our patient care system where it says, if you transport, you have to get a name, you have to get an insurance, you have to get an address. And so we work with that and then they pull the data and they say, hey, you know, we don't, 123 Main Street isn't a real address, can you check on that? And they send those back. And we get one or two a month usually. And then within 24 hours, and I'll say 48, um, somebody reviews that and then says, oh, you're right, it's 12 Main Street and then they bill. So we're getting 94% of what we expect. That's really good. Of our 100% self-pay patients, so these are people that either have no insurance, um, which does happen in Massachusetts, we have a requirement to carry insurance, but some people choose not to carry it and pay the penalty instead. Also, we do a lot of people from out of state we have a lot of tourist attractions. And anybody involved in a motor vehicle accident, especially, it's car insurance first, 
and then car insurance and medical fight it out. Um, of those people, of the 100% self-pay, we are collecting 16%. Um, that is up from 11 the year before and 0 0.45 the year before. Nope. And so nope. this, this is indicative of us doing a better job collecting information and moving forward. That last 80%, this is where kind of the ethical, moral quandary comes in. Because we could send all those people to collections, but we're not in the job of getting blood from a stone, to use a poor analogy. We're in the job of providing a service for somebody who needs it. And we never want somebody to hesitate picking up the 911 because they said, oh, last time my chest hurt, you know, I." I got a bill for $1,000, you know what, I'll just rough it out this evening. So this past year, uh, the Board of Oversight for South County EMS, we adopted a um, collections write-off policy that tries to be as objective as possible. So the same way every patient gets billed the exact same thing, fairly, everybody from this point forward will be looked at who owes money and use an objective way. And so it's designed to figure out who can afford to pay and is just choosing not to. Anybody who is less than 200% of the poverty line um, can have their bill totally written off because it would be unfair to do that to them. Anybody who's above the poverty, 200% of the poverty line but can articulate a hardship or why a reason why this bill would give them trouble can have their bill reduced significantly. And then it's kind of those last people that, like I said, can pay and choose not to. Then we have options for reporting to a collection or of the credit bureau or going to collections. That is the process moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then but you're still talking about the 84% that's not collected of uninsured. Yes, and that last 6%, you know, of and the co pays or things like that. Um, this is a way to collect money that we should be getting. This is not a way to be vindictive. This is not a way to make our service. It definitely could be. Well, yeah, when it's not a way to make our service level funded. You know, I, I try to, especially when speaking with other communities that are dealing with their own EMS problems right now, I like to remind them, you know, like, we cost a certain amount of money to provide a service, just like the police department, just like the fire sure. department. We have the benefit of being able to bill insurance and bill patients and recoup and offset some of our costs, yeah. but that's not 100%. That's the cherry on top, yeah. right? You know, that's sure. and and considering that that is the cherry on top, our collection rates, you know, in the mid 90s for the insured patients is outstanding. If you look at other communities, they're in the 80s, they're in the 70s. Overall, when you factor in all patients, the insured and the 100% self-pay, we're in the mid 80s mid 80 percent. Um, there's a lot of communities in the 60s or 70s. Um, and this is really a testament to how efficiently we're collecting the data, how strong Comstar is working for us, and and all of those things, all those moving pieces. Um, so write-offs are nature of the beast, um, and we will always we will always see write-offs. We will never not see them. Um, and I can I guarantee that we are we are doing a good job in, in our diligence and, and comp standards Do you well. feel, um, and there has been some discussion in the weeds, uh, you're the manager of the department, you're the clinical yep. top in the department, uh, you handle the budget, uh, you meet with all the towns. Does the department need a business person? That's a great question. There's, I lean heavily on the town of Deerfield. There's a lot of business related stuff that I know nothing about. The accounting, the HR stuff. And so to be able to lean on those experts, um, especially with the economy of scale for them, um, really goes a long way. I think we've talked about having some sort of clerical person or something like that. I'm not sure that makes fiscally the right sense, especially considering you know the hours and perhaps the benefits that might yep. because it would be a duplication of efforts. I think generate a new body in this already right. You know, so what? Um, there was a discussion at the BOO about you know going through these backlogs of 
of calls and you know what needs to be written off and applying our new thing you know and they asked me if I had time to do it and I said ask me after budget season <laughs> um, you know that that type of thing you know maybe maybe that's cyclical maybe that's what we attack in the summer after budget season and then it goes to the side later on or maybe moving forward that's okay you know yeah, yeah. do we get somebody for that um, being considered I don't think it's an appropriate move right now um, but what, what dollar figure are you talking about with the the less than the, the 80 percent well you collect 80 percent so what's it the 20 percent or whatever what's the dollar figure does that represent were you at 100 was it 100 they wrote off how many right how many thousands of dollars are you looking so at? for uh my fy my oh, let me that's 19 18. so for fy 18 um that was for the 100% self-pay, $16,000. So for, we collected $623,500 from all of the insurance people. For 100% self-pay, that was $16,000. So, uh, so $84,000 was not well, what's your six percent? What's your other your six percent? You see, collect ninety four. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so the six percent would have been uh, the difference between six hundred and sixty three thousand nine hundred and six hundred twenty three thousand six hundred. You're going to test forty thousand something. Yeah, about forty thousand something out of six hundred thousand. Oh, okay, that's not bad. No, you can be vindictive and chase people around. Yeah, yeah, and and part of the reason why we're seeing that write-off amount. I mean, uh, Deerfield just recently did a massive write-off for all the old Deerfield EMS stuff. So oh, I, I thought mean, we were included in that too. That was just yeah. Deerfield EMS. Um, part of it was waiting for that policy about write-offs and and collections and stuff like that to catch up. And so that's our next step. You know, we've been remiss in in following that and that is our next step to go through and get those numbers so we will see an initial large number because we're going to go back to 2014 um, for write-offs and then we're going to hope to on a regular basis moving forward how do they um, decide to chase around to do that pretty objective as far as the collections and stuff yeah it's I, i'll show you our policy it's it's an attempt to be as objective and conservative as possible but it, it's based on federal national poverty you know guidelines so and there's a number so there's a number they can use before they chase all around yeah <laughs> yeah how do you pretty well i don't know yeah it's not a good public question but like how do you find out someone's income for the purpose of the figuring out the so sort of so what happens is um what our our billing company um which we are very happy with um where are they from they're they're massachusetts based um eastern mass say what you will um so they, they do bills every 30 days um and starting on the second and third bills 60 and 90 days um they say if you have a concern about paying this and i change the language in the bill it's 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 not angry language it is it is nice language it says if you have a concern about your ability to pay please contact us set up a payment plan or you can apply for reduction or abatement of your charges and if they oh. if they ask to do that they get a form from comstar and it asks for them for their information it has their balance on it and asks for a narrative so that they can explain their situation and then any supporting documents so student loan documents you know social security payments things like that and then they submit that oh, to okay. Comstar. It gets forwarded to us. They say, I get an email that says, hey, we have a request for abatement. And so I look at it, I apply our rules, okay. um, and then I tell Comstar uh, moving okay. forward. So you don't so. know when you send out the bill who it, you know, where they're going to be. They have to volunteer no. the information. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, yeah. and the purpose of that is to treat everybody e as equals, fairly, objectively, respectfully. Right. Just, you know, so I'm not making an I'm not flagging anybody you're not hacking, on the call. You're not hacking into the IRS. No, 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 no. It's, it's on the individual to share what they feel is reasonable and relevant towards um, their request. To, um, to move away for a second from dollars and cents, mm -hmm. um, given that we won't be getting on top floor, but we are on that mm -hmm. camera. Um, people of Wakely, are we, for, for, our, for our money, are we sufficiently covered, both time-wise and 
from a clinical perspective? Uh, 100%. Um, if you look at our, I, you know, the, the cost to run the service, nine full-time staff, 30 per diems, 24-7 paramedics, and, and the 60 hours of continuing education we need, every research cycle, all that, it costs us um, $1.3 million. And Waitley's getting it for $106,000. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have people... Yeah, that, Waitley. That, um, it's... Uh, it's amazing the level of service, the response times. You know, West Waitley, obviously, if you choose to lift up there, it's going to be a little bit longer. Um, uh, 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 roll. But, um, that's why I didn't call. I, um, I, the average response times to Waitley are between you know, 7 and 10 minutes for the, the finest EMS coverage, really um, the gem of Franklin County, if you will. I, 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 Beating down my doors and ringing my phone off the hook, asking, you know, how do we get what you're doing down there? They need more um, people in a concentrated area. Yeah, it, they're not getting paramedics. Yeah. It's taking way too long for them to get them. They dial 911. They don't know how long it's going to take or where it's going to come from. Yeah. Somebody in Waitley dials 911. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, within, well, 10 within 10 minutes. 10 minutes, somebody's going to be there. You're going to get your local paramedics. You know who know you know your story. You know wear the local department's patch on their sleeve. Um, it's not somebody sent up from Springfield to cover a shift that was left open or something like that. So no, I mean those um, are all the reasons why we did it to start with. Yeah, um, and I, I, it can't, it the price can't be beat. Um, you're paying for the amount that you're using it instead of for the whole thing, and I think that's super brilliant. <laughs> and I wish I came up with it. It has, it has its ups and downs, yeah. but uh, yeah. Um, but I usually I do try to make the town meetings if you ever want me to speak. Well, I know that you do, and uh, who knows? Who who knows? Um, it could come up. You know. I, oh, you got me. You know, I love talking about EMS stuff. I'm sorry if I'm dragging on here. Um, I do want to talk about uh, the estimated revenue from services. That number was increased last year. It, it's been going up every year. I've been increasing it every year. So this year, um, $25,000 more to $525,000. That is still less than we expect to collect on billing. I just want to be clear about that. Um, we will collect more than that. Um, the purpose of that is as an enterprise fund, the money that we have left over, um, an additional revenue over expenses that we get stays in our enterprise fund. And you'll see that um, we do reapply retained earnings to lower the cost. It, so that also increased from last year from 204000 to 231. So the idea is that this is kind of our, I don't know the best turn of phrase, maybe safety net. Because we're so dependent on billing and the insurance market, and we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, if they get rid of the mandate and nobody has insurance anymore, and now my 100% self pays you know, percentage goes way up, you know, number of patients, and we see billing decrease, we need to allow for that fluctuation. And that's also dependent on the number of calls we do. If we do fewer calls, we're going to see less money in billing, right? So we always budget for less than we expect because that, that chunk that we get more, we're going to flip over to the next fiscal year and, and keep it as low as it would be if we increased our, our expectations the same. So it, that's, that's just that number there, and I think that we can safely increase that number to 525 and still have that, still. that number. So we shouldn't see any sort of significant change there. Okay. Um, Anybody have any questions? So Deerfield owns the building, and so the, yeah, they'll, they'll decide if it needs any upgrades or anything. Uh, yeah, and it's, you guys, yeah. You guys as a committee, in case something, the boiler blows up or something. Yeah, and the idea is that with that lease money going towards it, that there's never going to be a question about, oh, we don't know how to pay yeah. for it. The money's there. Like, 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 do like, do like, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about is it capital item? There is one capital item. Um, there were two initially. Um, there was a... Uh, an ambulance? Uh, yeah, the new ambulance, so as part of, you know, responsible capital planning, we always set money aside every year for the, for the ex known expected replacement of the ambulance. Um, we would be next due in 2021, and build times for ambulances are nearing 300 days. 
So if we were to wait to fiscal year 2021, and then wait the other 300 days, you can see where this is going. Um, our current 2010 international, not counting diesel fuel, and that thing gets about five miles per gallon, not counting fuel is costing us like $1.40 a mile to maintain. Um, it's been out of service for the past week right now um, with a steering box um, problem and parking brake problem. Uh, this vehicle, when it was purchased in 2009 by then Deerfield EMS, uh, it was the smartest vehicle to buy at the time. Um, you know, hindsight's 2020. Right now, it's it's an absolute disaster trying to keep it on the road. So. Um, in bumping up, because of the money that we set aside every year, um, in order to bump, we would actually be over budget in 21 to replace the ambulance. So we don't have to double the money we're spending in fiscal year 20 to bump that replacement up. It's actually only an additional like seventeen, eighteen thousand um, dollars By bumping that up a year, we're going to get rid of that hugely expensive headache that we can't keep on the road. Uh, it's an international, by the way, international 4300. Every time it needs service, it has to go to um, head, uh, Springfield? Yeah. yeah. Liberty, or not Liberty. Not May. Yeah, not yeah, May. Yeah, and I, I'm not gonna tell you the tow bill. Yeah. Oh <laughs> um, the plan is, uh, so we replaced an ambulance, the 2003 ambulance, we replaced that in 2017. Um, with a modern crew-centric patient uh, safety, crew safety vehicle. The idea would be to do a sister truck to that. All the hard work on designing that is already there. The large expenses that were associated with the new vehicles early on, the patient load systems, things like that, we already have. Those will be transferred over. So we're actually going to see a significant decrease in the cost of this next ambulance. Um, the other thing, too, by doing that sister truck, um, it will have commonality of training, commonality of parts. It will be another Ford. We go to uh, Greenfield Ford now for all of our routine maintenance and anything like that. It's a piece of cake. We got to go to the hospital to restock meds anyway. So somebody just drives it up, they drop it off, they get meds. When it's ready in an hour, we go and pick it up. Um, so Good. that was that. Uh, and uh, the last take home on that is because we put money away every single year, this is going to be uh, paid for 100% out of our existing retained earnings. We don't have to money. So we're not borrowing money. There's no assessments to the town associated with it. Um, the uh, yeah, it's it's really it's good news all around. Um, because I will say this, there was the question of earlier about retained earnings and how that you know what is that money? Yeah. In the old days, we used to have an ambulance replacement fund. And we would move that money to that fund, and that's where it lived, and we could watch it grow, and we knew what it was for. Um, Brenda Hill, the Deerfield Town Accountant, bless her heart, she's incredible. She's been working hard with Department of Revenue to figure out this enterprise fund stuff. We were told that legally we can't have like a separate capital ambulance <coughs> replacement fund inside of the enterprise fund. So, that money we're setting aside for the ambulance just lives as retained earnings in the enterprise fund. So every year when you look at that balance sheet, it grows and grows and grows. It grows by $50,000 every year. And so- Yeah, but now it's gonna go down by 200. So that's the thing. Right now in that account is 514,000. Everybody's like, you got half a million dollars. It's like, well, no, so, you know. No, you're <laughs> gonna buy a quarter of a million and dollar exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so um, we're trying to I think everybody's kind of getting the hang of why that number grows so big. We're trying to figure out the best way to do that accounting. It's a headache for me. It's a headache for Brenda. It's a headache for explaining to the new person who comes to town meeting, you know, what that number is. Um, so moving forward, we expect to see a better way of accounting that. We're just trying to play within what we understand the law to be right now. Um, so if you hear why there's half a million dollars in that account, um, that's what it is. Yeah, quarter of a million of it is. Yeah, ambulance. Yeah. Well. We're glad it's there. Yeah, me too. Yes. Right. Yep. Instead of me. Hey guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next replacement, we will go back into our fifty thousand dollar a year replacement schedule. So that means the next replacement would be in twenty twenty five. Yeah. Um, that's the next scheduled replacement. That would replace the two thousand seven. That third line truck comes up to duty. Um, we need two ambulances to cover our calls, so we need three to keep two in service. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that third line truck only sees a few thousand miles a year. It does the event standbys, the um, science fair days of the elementary school, things like that. So I, I feel good about its reliability, um, especially, and even its age, considering the amount of miles it's not driving every year. And I think 2025 is reasonable. Um, ask me again in 2023, um, but give me three years to um, figure out what that case is. So just, uh, just to wrap up a little bit, when you said the, uh, when you said the collections mm -hmm. from insurance, was somewhere around six, six hundred, six hundred thirty, sixty, or six hundred, yeah, something like that. How does that? How does that get? How, how does the distribution of those funds work once they come into the department? Once they, once we get it, it goes straight into our enterprise fund. Just right into the enterprise. Fund. Yeah, right into the fund. Um, all the money goes through Comstar. They handle one hundred percent of that, um, and. They write a check to Comstar, Comstar direct deposits it into our enterprise fund. Um, and then <clears throat> Comstar charges a percentage based on that money that was actually collected. So then we get a separate bill from Comstar for their services, um, which uh, our rates are reasonable, but um, our, we're, we're looking at renegotiating that since our call volume has gone up since we last negotiated to see if we can get a reduction in that rate. I'm good. I'm good. Anybody got a question? Man? No. Thank you very much. Thank very you. Thorough. If you want me to do John's presentation next year, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got to put the little extra column in. The yeah, percentage is not a problem, um, and I can easily provide the like actual expenses every year too. Documentation yeah. to go with it. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be nice. John's almost there. Talk to him. Give him help. <laughs> Guidance. We know he means well. Um, Okay. I'm sorry if I rambled on that. No, no, this is fine. I got excited. We learned a lot. <laughs> Very good. Eh? All right. You did? Well, some of us did not hear you say. I might be asking you a month if you get out of it. Thank you. Don't spend Thank a lot you. of time in South Bluefield. Come by the station sometime. Yeah. We're coming in. <laughs> yeah. Do you have mini splits? Uh, we don't. No. Yep. But do you have coffee? Uh, always. Bingo. Always. The fresh stuff. No decaf though. All right. Yeah. All righty. So next. Um, what's next? What's next, Brian? So Brian. let's wrap up. So th the plan was to do cultural recreation services tonight. Yep. Yeah. I don't have the Tri Town Beach District budget. Why not? question because okay. it's not it hasn't gone through our neighbor to the north oh, oh. 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 I don't want to dip my toe too heavily in that water but Ooh, little especially contentious. now a little icy <laughs> yeah a little icy um, Jonathan asked if we could defer rec commission and South County Senior Center so he's able to be here um, cemetery commission I'm trying to get Darcy to come on the 26th we had the library so that leaves veterans and local council on aging. Those are not very big increases. I don't know if we want to go through those or not. Then for public safety, um, I asked Jim to hold off till the 26th because the select board wants to talk about some things with the police department budget, which would also affect the Quinn Bell incentive because that's a, a percentage of salary of an employee under the Quinn Bill. That leaves animal control, animal inspection, emergency management. We usually save that for when Lynn comes in, which will be on the 26th. Yep. And then there's Franklin County Inspection Services. Um, that's state so that's about it. level S7500. So I guess we're- uh, There's those. Um, I also put on the agenda debt. We only have one outstanding loan right now, and that's- um, Fire truck. That's the fire truck. Um, I think it's around 86, 86,000. We don't have any short term debt or um, long term debt that's backed by that, well, let's call it general fund backed debt. Yeah. There's CPA backed debt for the town hall, and then there's enterprise fund backed debt for the water, um, the water meters and uh, the manganese filtration system, which should be constructed this spring. Um, and then 
we're also going to talk about unclassified. That's temporary loan interest reserve fund. For COG, there's a small decrease there. Physical and test, that's level funded. There may be some additional um, um, physicals that are needed under OSHA. Now that we have to comply with OSHA, um, we may have to have that on a more regular basis. Um, town vehicles, fuel, um, that was level funded at, at 28. And then the educational incentives is the same each year for the town clerk. Um, or we can jump into any of those if you want. And then we also wanted to discuss the, um, Paul, I think you said we wanted to discuss, discuss the schools. Um, well, anybody have any recommendations as to what they would like to do? Um, anybody have any questions on any of those? Questions, questions on, sorry. On any of the agenda items that um, that we have not covered, um, when we're not going to do obviously anything with the, uh, with the recreation or um, any of those services, um, debt isn't really a discussion point. No, um, schools. I think. To me, it's just, it's, um, I don't have, I can't get my arms around it. Here's a question I have about the schools. Okay, okay. we budget 38, they want 38,000 for subs. I don't know how many people work in Waitley. In elementary school. It's $210 a day, 180 school days. Same size school in Conway, $18,000 a year. And that's where I get back to when they don't spend the money, we don't get it back. No. Same numbers, you said 38,000 for subs? They asked for 38,000 for subs, and I don't know how many people take the day off. And 18,000 in Conway, and I can get my fingers wrapped around some of them, but I'm sure I will. And I also have a question, there's a uh, negotiation here, okay? How long is the school year? How many months of the year? Yeah, ten, ten months. Ten months. So they're getting ten sick days a year. A year. They're only working ten months. Yeah. I don't know why they would need sick days in July and August, and I don't know why it wouldn't be prorated. Excellent question. Yeah. So that's a school committee question. Yep. Well, the school committee stamp rubber it. stamp it. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. But and it, it's going back to the physical plant at Frontier, and they're talking about the track. And the roof is leaking, and I think they have. I want to say there's something wrong with the water. I'm not sure. And they want to replace the boiler, so I don't know why they're zoned in on the track. That Fred do a physical this, plan. Fred brought that up when we first sat down. That you know, that there, it's the track is at the very top of the list. Six hundred yeah, thousand. There is no way track, that track, track, track there. Track. <laughs> right. What I mean, it was, wouldn't you it fix was the roof first? That, that that was going to be in the. The, in that, what benefits the most kids is what should be done first. What the most most kids in the school, whatever benefits the most is what should be done first. Oh, then it's the structure. Well, no, it's, 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 it's safe, safety, heating, and safety and benefits the most so people. Like yeah. leaking roofs right. and things should come first. Yeah. That's I. I don't know why they're zoned in on the track. Track. Yeah, I, oh, I brought that up, yeah. and uh, you know, I told them that. The way they structured the the projects, we should have we should focus on security and safety first, and then and then track would if we wanted to separate later on. But no, they figured track is important because it's athletics. It's an extra activity. Athletics, activity. athletics is a is a big promotion for the for the school, and and they wanted that as a separate funding item to let people know what it would cost. And well, but are they at the point where if they don't fix the track, they're going to have to shut that down? But you Probably. can't. You can't risk a, the. A I know what you're saying. You know, I breaking say an no. ankle on a track. You could break that in any. You could do that in any field up there. Well, or down the yeah, hurley. True. You looked at hurley when you went by. Yeah, yeah but, but I, I <laughs> yeah, think, but uh, yeah, 
the legal ramifications are much different. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you got the same issues down the hurl he whether you're using it playing soccer. I don't think so. You gotta try to take a look at that. I don't think the legal con connection is there. Yeah, I remember. They, I remember the, the answer answering the question. But I don't remember the exact answer, but it had to do with safety. safety. Yeah. That uh, that the track is at this point a safety hazard of some sort. Right. And, and I, I'm, t I'm telling you what they said. I'm not what telling you. I'm well, not trying don't. to defend it. I mean, well, I am trying to defend it, but I have no qualms about saying, well, I think the roof should be fixed or the, roof should the, be the boiler, boiler or, yeah. or yeah. Roof, yeah. you know. But if they are coming from the aspect of safety, and if we don't fix it, we have to shut this offering down. And so it's the, from my understanding, it's the, it's the largest, it's it's the it's the number one sport in school right. in terms of the number of students of participating. Students. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. So it's a money maker. That's what I told yeah. Bob. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it is or not. It, it may be an attraction for a school of choice kid. It's a money maker. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that would make it a money that maker. It a money maker. Yeah. Um, but, but it's always been, you know, for 30 years, it's been a big deal. Track has been a big deal. Well, the frontier. Track has yeah. been, that track has been a problem since it was Oh, since built. the day it was built. Right. But this is the third time third it's time been rebuilt. Right. So, I don't think they ever used it the first time, did they? I think it was started to sink before they did. I think so. <laughs> so I think that, you know, they, hopefully they can get their act together and get it fixed the proper way. Instead of doing it. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was built on a swamp, they stumps underneath and everything else. I remember what that lot used to look like. So do you? Well, that's why the price is so high, I think. It, it's, re, it's, it's not, what I say, refinishing or resurfacing. No, it's, it's more a lot of rebuilding. Of yeah, a lot more drainage work, a lot of reconstruction. Where do you think the water's going to go? I don't know. But now, what were you saying about a water problem, Bob? Raise it up well. In the school? Yeah. <coughs> From water and roof. Drinking water. Drinking water. Um, but, I mean, I don't know what the priorities are. The track is the priority. They should do that first. That benefits, you know, 80 kids. Well, it is, yeah, the first year, year or two, yeah, that's on the program to do that first. Um, Waverly Elementary School has, the last one I saw, has a pretty significant increase. Okay, and that's, a, and that's on top of a significant increase last year. Uh, we have an increase from Frontier. We also have a capital planning initiative from Frontier. We have a water, um, Water department um, expenses uh, from the middle of town, um, and we have the cust customary increases from every other department. So I really think that we, Brian, yeah, we, <laughs> that, that, that we should be. I I think we got to put together a sort of a mock. What's this thing look like in the end? Kind of a budget sooner than later so that we can start saying yay or nay to these things. Yeah. Um, because I, it's sort of all coming together yeah, and, and, and fast. Yeah. We have it's, pretty it's much. March. I have everybody's except four budgets probably. And, and now that we have Frontier and we have, and, and now that we have Whitley Elementary, now we, we know the big Big players. Big players now. So. Yep. Okay. Yep. When do you think that um, we might be able to get a? Well, we'll certainly have it for the next meeting. Okay. For sure. Okay. So let's be. Let's get ready. Next meeting, if you have any, I mean, we're going to have to take a look at those school budgets again. Um, and, okay. and feel good or positive or negative about them um, and be, be able to discuss what's behind them. Um, and then we'll have to take a look at the whole shooting match and see how it's going to impact the, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's meeting the 26th, that's still a, uh, that's a joint meeting too? Yep. And that'll be it? It's still fine. all those committees. So the next one we will see uh, police will be in? Yep. Uh, what are police looking for? Well. You don't want it all. <laughs> Scary. It's not free. It's for that one. He's looking for another full-time officer. Well, and he's looking for a big increase in his pay in addition to his COLA. Good silly. Yeah. <clears throat> Is that based on we can discuss that. Well, it's, it's, it's a written request. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's. What are we going to do with another full time guy? Get another full time parent? Who come to the select board meeting tomorrow night? We'll talk yeah. about it. Probably yeah. have one already sitting there. Uh, mutual aid, help out with Have mutual aid driving around. You guys got to get out at night. You got to get out at night. Uh, it's been a lot of time Don't know. worry. Well, you're going to see him night in. Yeah. I can hardly sleep. Wow. <laughs> so you drive I have his house. written request if you want to read it. But. Now we really come yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he, he's, he, he's got a, a million reasons why he needs an, uh, full, another full time guy. But I think <laughs> the size of this town, uh, I'm not getting into it. Well, so with the demographics and with the sort yeah. of select board thinking, and right. uh, uh, the only other thing I'll say is the personnel committee voted a 2.5 percent poll. Wow, that's above and beyond. That is pretty typical for what others are doing. Yeah, that doesn't mean you go. That means you don't follow the follow the course of the water. I, I, I'm just saying <laughs> it was well, typical that of there. what yeah. towns who, that we compare ourselves to were doing, and. Yeah. The, uh, this, uh, this, this escalation has to slow down. Okay. Nobody else is getting a two and a half percent increase every year. I don't. I know Apparently, there's a lot of people who are because there are lots of tenants who are getting two and a half percent increase. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. You show me. Towns. Like it's like the school. It's like the school. Nobody leaves. Nobody leaves. Union 38. They, they don't 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 jump stay. over the bridge. Let them. I'm not going to jump over. Cost of living cannot continue like it's going. Two and a half percent, two percent, two and a half percent. It used to be you'd get it once every three or four years. Now they expect it every year. Automatic. Yeah. Whether you're any good or so not. Is that two and a half percent? Is is that is that in concrete? Is that that's it that was, was recommended. It was recommended. That's, that's a recommendation. That's a recommendation. Okay. You, so, it's, so it's not over. The no. No. The finance committee can do with it as they see fit. We recommend based Good. on last year they got two and a quarter. What the water looks right. like. And two before that. I would have to look it up. I got it. It's in some of this paper yeah, it's here. Uh, Ryan should have it right at his fingertips. You gave it to us. It's yeah. all in your packet. You gave it to us. There's way too many pages here. It's all yeah. this time. They're the single page. Why? That's why I do it in small print. Oh, I know. I, I, That's why I can't read it. It's like my friend to read my writing. It's the yeah. hieroglyphics. 2.25, two, two, two and a half, and 18, 2 percent, and 17. So it's, it's going through. Yeah. Well, if you, go, if you go way back, in 2013, they got 2.5, but in 2014, they got 1.7. Yeah. So. <coughs> That's an normal way. I mean, one, one of the things that, and Brian, Joyce know this. One of the things that bothers me about the whole COLA thing is the information that we are we look at is there we have uh, what the cost of living is in the Boston Nashua area or something, which as far as I'm concerned has nothing to do with what happens here. No. And well, we straightened that out like yeah, three years ago. Oh, well, that's the same that was information the data they had that available sure. that weren't the best for them. That's why they put that, that's we're stuck with the regions that the Bureau of Labor Standards uses. That's that's that who? That's the Bureau of Labor Standards. Bureau of Labor Standards. Okay, they are statistics. <clears throat> oh, statistics. Yeah. Um, that's that's the regions that they have that include this area. Mm -hmm. Is it influenced by sure? I mean. I'm not going to say no. No. Um, sure it is. But it's, it's, it's the area that we have that we're included in. But it, All right. If you look at 
what Social Security people are getting. Yeah, this year it was what, 2.8 increase? Yeah, but you historically back, it's. You go back a couple of years, there was three, four years where there was nothing. zero increase, and zero. this town was recommending one to two and a half percent increase every year. Yeah. I mean, how do people on, on retirement, Social fixed Security, income. support something fixed like that? Fixed income support that when they're not getting any increase, actually decrease. Does the insurance costs go up? Medicare keeps going decrease, up every year. Decrease of a spending dollar every year. Yeah. That's the way you know, the, the other side of, not to, to get into a huge discussion yeah. about it, but the other side of that argument, Fred, is that the, the cost of the health insurance to the employees of this town goes up every year also. Now, yeah. well, I will be the first true. one to admit that if you don't like working for this town and you don't like, you think you should get a 3% increase mm -hmm. and you can go somewhere else and get it, yeah. you had, don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. But, yeah, I agree with you. Know, you yeah. I'm a hard ass because I think like that. Yeah. But the that's the honest, that's, that's the honesty. real that's no that's reality yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the that's real world. Yeah. Yeah. It's real, but it's I, I'm sure you know, it's you know we you, yeah. you get all this and we adjourn. All those yeah. in favor? Aye. Aye. We don't check that.